Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ville and I'm a committer and PMC member at Apache Superset uh, and I'm a committer at Apache eCharts as well. Uh, and I work as a staff software engineer in the community growth team at Preset, uh, which offers a managed uh, Superset SaaS uh, service. Uh, and over the years, I've, I've worked a, a considerable amount on the, the Viz plugin system uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about that more in more detail here today. So uh, just a few words about the Viz plugin system. Uh, so Viz plugins are written exclusively in JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, and Viz plugins make their uh, data requests uh, from the back end uh, using a kind of generic JSON payload. Uh, and usually uh, the, the majority of plugins usually just uh, issue uh, one query, but it's, it's also possible to request uh, multiple queries if, uh, if you have a more complicated uh, plugin that needs Several, uh, the, valid, the results from several different queries. Uh, and uh, the, the chart data endpoint uh, also offers uh, post-processing operations. Uh, so if you need to do any kind of um, kind of post, uh, post query aggregations or sorting or rolling aggregations or stuff like that, uh, you can do those in uh, the chart data request. So you don't need to worry about that in, in the front end layer. Uh, and usually uh, these uh, Viz plugins are uh, added to custom forks of Superset. So usually if you have an organization that's running Superset internally, uh, they'll fork off of the, the, the real kind of the, the main Superset repo, and then they'll add their, their uh, plugins to, to that fork. Uh, but uh, Superset plugins can actually be embedded into external uh, web applications as well. Uh, and it's it's something that's being actively worked on right now. So uh, I think there, there's gonna be more coming out uh, about that system in, uh, over the next few months. Uh, and then finally, there's also something called a, a data mask uh, hook, which enables more advanced uh, chart interaction. So for instance, if, if you want to add cross-filtering functionality to your this plugin, uh, or, or you need to re-trigger queries on, on your own plugin, uh, then you can use, use that hook. Uh, and uh, some of this more, um, more advanced functionality is still fairly undocumented. So if you know JavaScript or TypeScript very well, you, you can read the code and, and kind of figure out how this works. Uh, but uh, in addition, we're, we're also working uh, actively on adding uh, more documentation about this. Uh, so uh, we should have this, this fully documented uh, during this quarter. Uh, now, the, this plugin framework has evolved significantly over the years, uh, and uh, we refer to, in, in the begin beginning of time when Superset, the Superset project was started, uh, there was something that we referred to as the V0 framework. Uh, and back then, uh, visualization plugins were, uh, were developed uh, as JavaScript uh, for the front end part, but then they also had to have a, a, a back end, kind of a Python based class architecture uh, where uh, you had to essentially make uh, both Python and, and uh, JavaScript code. Uh, and that kind of turned out to be not, not such a good pattern. And uh, we, we started working on, on decoupling those systems. And around two years ago, uh, we released something that we referred to as the V1 uh, uh, Viz plugin system. And that was a fully decoupled system where the, the visualization plugin is written completely in JavaScript. And, and then there's a, a generic chart data endpoint from uh, which you can make data requests. Uh, and when, when this work was done, uh, the code base was a set, essentially kind of split into two. So any visualization stuff was moved into a repo of, of its own. Uh, and then those plugins were then pulled in as NPM uh, packages into the main repo. Uh, and that's turned out to be not such a nice developer experience because it was really difficult to, uh, or for instance, if you wanted to make changes to your to one of the, the built-in Viz plugins and Superset, you'd first have to do a pull request on the, the Superset UI repo, then you'd have to make an NPM package publish, uh, and then you, you'd have to pull that new bumped package uh, into, the, into the main repo. So there was this kind of really long lag between um, getting these uh, bug fixes and new features uh, pulled into the main repo. 
And similarly, if you wanted to run your own custom biz plugins, you'd have to fork off of the superset UI plugin, and then you'd have to pull out uh, all the pre-existing uh, biz plugins, and then you'd replace those with your own. Uh, and that was really kind of problematic because you had um, you, the superset UI repo it was essentially a, a learner-based uh, massive mono repo. Uh, so it meant that you had this uh, all of this overhead that you had to manage just to, just to be able to uh, deploy uh, your your one custom biz plugin. Uh, so all of this actually led to the fact that uh, last year alone we had to do over 100 npm bumps for superset UI. Uh, on the main repo. Uh, and then also one really big problem with, with this old architecture was the fact that you weren't able to cherry pick any bug fixes to, to this plugins after a release branch was cut. So uh, say for instance, we released 1.3.0 and then someone you know, noticed, hey, there's a bug in, in one of these Viz plugins. It was almost impossible to make to uh, cherry pick that fix into the release branch. So you, you had to wait for the next uh, the next um, cut of superset to be able to get those latest fixes in. So to fix all of this, uh, last year we started a, a massive refactor of essentially pulling in the superset UI repo into the main repo. Uh, and that was, uh, first of all, we debated how to do this and it was a big change, but then uh, towards the end of uh, the last half of last year, uh, work actually started on that. And that effort was actually completed last November. Uh, and uh, since November, Superset UI was actually incorporated into the Apache, the, the main Apache Superset repo. So uh, the old Superset UI repo was then archived. Now, uh, a byproduct of this great refactor uh, that made working with, uh, with the Apache plugins much easier uh, was that it actually broke the old uh, custom this plugin system. So we had to refactor that system. Uh, so uh, uh, about a month ago, we then started working on, on refactoring it. Uh, and from all of the things that we'd learned over time that were kind of difficult to, to work with, uh, we tried to simplify those as much as possible. So. Uh, the new V2 plugin system is now fully self-contained. Uh, so when, when you build your, your custom this plugin using the, the superset uh, Yeoman generator, uh, it, it creates a, a, a plugin kind of a framework uh, or the, the boilerplate for the framework, which includes a, a full uh, build system and um, you can get it running within something like 30 seconds uh, and then you can even NPM publish uh, to NPM if you want to. So it's, it's really easy to get started, uh, have it working, and then even publishing it to the rest of the community. Uh, the structure of the V2 plugins actually hasn't changed all that much. Uh, so the, the, the code structure is almost the same. I'm just gonna walk through the, the main building blocks of it. Um, so there's four main components starting with the control panel. So the control panel is uh, essentially defines what kind of controls you have on your explore view. And it, it's, uh, it just says what kind of query elements you're going to make available for the user so that you, know, you can group by these columns and you can add these metrics that are aggregates. Uh, and then um, you can also add uh, custom kind of visualization customization uh, options for for instance, changing the color palette or uh, other things like that. Uh, then after the control panel comes the build query phase. Uh, so the build query callback is something that takes in the control values and then it constructs a chart data requests out of that. So you can fine tune what kind of a chart data request you want to make. And if you don't want to make just one, you can then you know, add multiple chart data requests in, in the build query phase. Uh, then the third component is uh, transform props and transform props is a callback that receives whatever came back from the chart data API. So that's uh, usually uh, the data frame uh, in, in kind of a, a array format. And then there's some metadata about uh, what kind of data types uh, are 
present, um, you know, start and end dates and stuff like that. Uh, and and the, the point with transform props is to take that stuff that comes in and then transform it into a form that you can then feed into your uh, final biz plugin or, or the plugin component itself. And so then finally, you have your this, this plugin component, which uh, is a React based co component. Uh, and that then receives whatever comes back from transform props. And then you can then do whatever uh, kind of standard React stuff you want to do. Uh, so do any kind of um, final transformations, memoizations, stuff like that. And then you return the, the rendered component back. So Without further ado, I'm going to stop the presentation and, and now I'm going to build a, a custom biz plugin from scratch uh, using this system. Uh, can you guys still see my screen here? Okay, great. Uh, so first of all, I'm, so what I'm, what I'm running here is just a vanilla uh, superset master branch. So I, I think I pulled this this morning. Um, and the, the first step that I'm going to do is I need to install the Yeoman, the Yeoman, um, the, the Yeoman NPM library. So I do NPM I slash G and Yo. And what this does is this installs uh, the Yeoman library as a global uh, dependency. So uh, when I do this, then it makes uh, the Yeoman, uh, Yeoman library available to me wherever I, I go in my, uh, my, my file or directory structure. All right, and then when that's done, then I go into uh, the packages, generator superset, and then I do npm i and then npm link. And so what this does is uh, first I install all the dependencies that are required. And then I also make this uh, the superset yeoman generator available globally wherever I need it. So now that that's done, now I'm actually going to create my, my biz plugin. So I just open up a new terminal. And then I go to, t, uh, to the temporary directory, and then I do something like uh, superset plugin chart ille. Go into that directory, and then I then I run uh, yo superset ui slash superset, and that uh, that kickstarts the yeoman generator. So now it asks uh, kind of basic questions and I, I can just uh, go with the defaults or, or customize these. So this would be the Villa plugin. The description will be Villa's awesome, this plugin, and then it's gonna be a regular chart. So now what's happened is it, it's created this um, this boilerplate code. So now if I just do npm ci and npm run build, it's first going to install all of my dependencies and then it's going to uh, uh, build the plugin itself. So what I actually do here is, or at the end of this, uh, this process, I'm actually going to have an npm package that I can then already published to NPM if I want to. So if I if I now typed NPM publish, I would actually publish this to NPM and there would be a package there called uh, superset plugin chart ville. So I'll just uh, let that run for now. Uh, and then I go back into my into my main superset repo and I'll go into my superset front end main directory. And then I'm gonna to, going to install this plugin that I'm that I'm building right now. So it's gonna be npm uh, i dash s and then tmp so essentially just installing a locally available um, npm package. 
and I can see that I'm it's uh, still installing the dependency, so this is going to take uh, take a while now. This is usually the, the, the part of NPM stuff that takes the longest time. It's, it's installing dependencies. Do you maybe want to talk about the different types of charts, you, you know, regular chart time series, like in the, in the wizard itself? Yeah. So, um, it's actually, it's possible to choose either making a regular chart or a time series chart and superset was originally built for Apache Druid, which is a time series database. So it was kind of natural to have kind of very built in low level support for time series uh, visualizations. Uh, and for right now, if, if you want to make a time series chart, uh, it's, it's easier to kind of use this is time series Boolean flag and set that to, to true. And then when you do that, then it's, it's kind of, it, it generates the, uh, the query is easier and it's kind of easier to work with it. Uh, but so very much depending on whether or not you have a time series chart or not, um, uh, that's going to determine uh, if you're going to set that flag or not. All right, so the, the build uh, was completed and what happened here is uh, it at the end of the, the build process, it runs the unit tests and um, now it shows here that it's run three test suites and all three test suites passed. Uh, and here in my main repo, I can now see that uh, it's completed the, the build pro or um, the NPM installed. So if I look at a git diff, I can see here that it's added this uh, superset plugin chart ville to the package lock file. And then it's in, in the package.json file as well. So it's, it's both pinned and added as a, as a kind of a regular uh, dependency. Uh, and now I'm just going to start the, the dev server. So now that I've done this, I've actually installed the plugin, but I'm, I'm not still referencing it in, in any of my code. So I'm going to jump into my IDE uh, and I'm going to go into this file called uh, main preset.js. And this file is the, the place where you register all of your visualization plugins. Uh, so uh, every single pre pre-installed uh, superset visualization is registered here. And, and when it's registered here, then it's, it's made available in, in the user interface as well. So I'm just gonna go here and do import from, so I'm gonna be referencing that NPM package. And then I, I assume this, uh, this plugin is gonna be superset plugin chart ville. So first I'm importing it and then I'm adding it to this array of registered or I'm essentially registering uh, the plugin. And when I've done that, let's go see what the terminal is doing. So right now it's, uh, it's rebuilding everything. And this is, this is gonna, gonna take a while. Is there anything Srini that you think we can discuss while we're waiting for the build? If you want, you could tackle one of the questions. Um, I know we used to do them at the end, but just, uh, all right. Um, I'm going to take at the end question later on because that's kind of a bigger yeah. question. Look, look at his third question, actually. It's very relevant right. around time series. Yeah. All right. So what makes a chart better suited for the time series flavor? Flavor When time is used in abscissa, i.e. plot something over time, or anytime there is a timestamp column in the query result, uh, yet where the time dimension is ultimately aggregated. So. We're kind of, it, it's difficult to answer, give, give one very good answer here, but we're kind of on, on the brink of 
transitioning from superset 1.x to superset 2.x. Uh, and for those of you who have been, who are following the code base actively might have noticed last week that we merged the generic x-axis feature, which essentially makes, makes it possible to use non-temporal uh, x-axis on the current e-charts time series chart. Uh, and one of the things we're trying to move towards is making um, time series charts just any, you know, any kind of chart. So making the, the time series x-axis uh, as being just another x-axis and you know, whether or not it's temporal or categorical or linear, it's, it's all the same. So I'd, my recommendation is if, if you're going to still be working on the superset one branch and, and you want to make a plugin that's uh, highly compatible with, uh, with, with the, the official one dot something uh, superset release, then I think you should definitely be using the, the is time series flag. Uh, but if you're, if you're going to be pursuing more bleeding edge stuff, then you can actually start considering deprecating the is time series flag and just treating the, the temporal column as being kind of just a, a, another linear uh, axis type out there. All right. Okay, so I'm new to, to React and TypeScript. I managed to get some charts up using Superset Generator, but uh, cannot get it to work when you choose the chart plugin with hooks. The hello world error is out. Has anyone got it to work? I think what's happening here is you might actually be using the, the officially available superset generator from NPM. And if that's the case, then you should probably check out uh, master branch and uh, locally install that version of, uh, of the generator template because um, uh, the, the current version of it, which works with, with the, the post monorepo migrated superset, uh, doesn't even, I think, offer the, the class-based component. Uh, so it, it's only offering the, the hook-based one. All right. And then can you please give some example on how to use the set data mask hook? That's actually... Um, that, I think that's a topic for a, for a, for a different tutorial. Uh, but we're actually going to be documenting it fairly well. And if you want to take a sneak peek, you can actually take a look at how how the pie, pie chart in the eCharts plugin looks, what it looks like. Um, so it's actually fairly simple. And, and on a high level, the, the data mask hook is just applying a data mask on top of the form data that's being sent uh, from, from all the other plugins. Uh, so... Um, for instance, if you call the set data mask hook with, you know, you're adding something to the filter property, then any affected chart will just add that filter to their own chart data request. So it's a fairly kind of simple overlay on top of uh, whatever the, the, the chart data request is for, for the affected charts. All right, so it seems like my, my NPM build here is completed. So now I'm just going to jump into superset. All right. So I'm just going to go into the birth names example data set. I just always end up using it. <laughs> I should probably start using a new one. I'm getting kind of bored with this one. <laughs> Uh, all right, and then I go here. So let's see. I, I look for Villan. Sure enough, it pops up. And then I drag and drop uh, a metric in. And there we go. So, of course, this took some time to build, but there was a, I didn't need to do any changes to the plugin code itself. Uh, to be able to make the plugin work and then adding it to my superset fork was just essentially adding two lines of code. So fa fairly minimal uh, effort. Uh, and then in the blog post, I also added this liquid plugin and I'm just gonna walk through what the code looks like. So I'm, I'm first just going to um, 
install the liquid plugin here and then I'm going to uh, kickstart the build and then we're going to go and uh, look at some of the code. So fairly simple, it's the same thing, npm dash s. Uh, I have this under the source folder under my uh, home directory. So it's superset chart, no, superset plugin chart liquid. Take too long. So now I'm going to start the dev server again. And then I'm going to go here, do a new import. So the IDE already sees that there's something called Superset Plugin Chart Liquid. And it's, I think this one was called liquid. All right, so we'll just leave that to simmer for a while. Uh, so this is the, the liquid plugin and we'll just quickly look at uh, all of those four components that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, so we'll start by looking at the control panel. So the control panels is really simple. I just have a metric and then I have ad hoc filters. Uh, so this plugin doesn't have any, any group by columns or, or other stuff to that nature. So you can only define one metric uh, and then you can of course add uh, filters if, if you want to. Uh, and then there's a customized section. So the, the plugin or the visualization library that I'm using offers a, a few customizations to what kind of a, a chart shape you have. So I'm just kind of exposing those, um, those options here uh, as just one drop down menu. And then if we look at the build query, the build query actually doesn't do almost anything. And it seems like I even have a redundant group by here. So I could just actually remove that thing. Uh, so there's, uh, this is all the boilerplate you need for the, the query. So the superset UI library actually takes care of constructing the query and you don't really have to think about it that much. If you're using the, uh, the standard uh, controls that are uh, offered out of the box. And then there's the get metric, um, the transform props callback. Uh, so this is very short. Uh, and here I'm just essentially receiving whatever data came in and then I'm kind of removing anything that's not uh, strictly needed for this plugin. And then I'm returning the width, the height, metric name, uh, the metric value, uh, and then the shape uh, of the chart. And then finally, this, this is the actual React component that I'm rendering. Uh, so I'm here I'm just receiving whatever values came in. I'm adding some styling, uh, and then I'm memoizing the, the the config object that I'm that I'm going to be passing to the to the visualization library. So fairly fairly simple. I'll just um, yeah. So it's not quite quite yet done, but what I can do is something that uh, if you want to customize this, uh, then of course, I, I, the only thing that I've really implemented here is, is the shape parameter, but uh, there's a bunch of other things that, things that I could configure as well if I wanted to. And uh, one that comes to mind is the color. So I can, I can fairly easily change the color of the chart if I want to. Uh, so let's now let's see how far, far along we are. Not quite yet done. 
but essentially if, if I want to change the color of this chart, uh, then I can just add something like this here. So let's make it red. It's almost almost done. I hear there's a new uh, JavaScript build environment that's supposed to be a hundred times faster than this thing that we're using right now. It's yes, yes, build. Painful, yeah, yeah, it's going to be, if, if it ever yeah. actually works, it's going to be awesome. It's by the Figma CTO, but yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he's like, he's a fiend and he just, he left Figma to work on it full time, but yeah. All right, so I'm refreshing my, my browser. It's taking forever. And you might have noticed here that I'm actually running the, the NPM run dev in my liquid plugin directory. So whenever I do changes to, to the code, it rebuilds uh, automatically. Right, so I think, all right. Yeah, so now it's reloading. Hopefully now things stabilize. If I now do liquid. So this is the, the plugin with, and I've added some example screenshots here as well, which is very easy to do. And now if I just, if I just do a, a constant metric, uh, so this plugin visualizes anything between zero and one. So I'm just gonna do uh, a stupid 0 0.85 here. And lo and behold, it's, it's red. So now I can, this should be faster. So I can make this green. And now because I'm running the NPM run dev server on the plugin, then that gets rebuilt. And then when that's rebuilt, it re-triggers uh, the superset front end to rebuild as well. Or it should it at least, let's wait for just one more second. Yeah, it's building. I think I need a new laptop, one of those M1s. <laughs> I, I have an M1 laptop and it's it's pretty crazy. I, I don't know how it's possible, but yeah, it's it's so nice. I, I feel my work laptop is slower, even though it's like a 16 inch, you know, thing, but yeah. All right, but there we go. So, and of course, I mean, the just looking at the documentation, I, I kind of started getting excited here because you can actually give a, a callback here so you can make a gradient out of it, or then you could make use the superset UI color registries, which also offer a bunch of kind of uh, neat functionality. So you could do something where you have a gradient going from blue to red, for instance. Uh, and then if it's zero, then it would be blue. And then the higher it gets higher to 100%, it starts turning red. So this could actually be a fair, fairly neat uh, visualization if, if we did some fine tuning to this. All right, but I think that's, that's pretty much it uh, for the demo. So Am I missing anything, Shreemi, or do you think this is this covers it? So I, I think it's good. It... I just want to say one thing. I mean, maybe you want to drop a link to the plugin. Um, uh, I guess it's it's in the blog post, right? The it's in the yeah, it's it's in right. the blog post. So there's yeah, yeah, there there's links to all of the, these things in the blog post. Perfect. I'll just paste that here if anyone wants to replicate this exactly. So, yeah. Um, no, I think that that looks good. Uh, we have a ton of questions, so we can uh, 
we can go through those. Yeah. All right. So where should we start? Uh, do you want to MC these questions? Sure. Me? Uh, I know Tian's been waiting, so let's let's get to Dynamic Viz plugins. One, what are your thoughts on the future of Aaron's Dynamic Viz plugins feature flag, i.e., serving Viz plugins separately from Superset? I was just discussing this with Aaron and other people yesterday, and um, the way I see it, um, this V2 Viz plugin stuff that we did, um, this was kind of a first step. So we now have a have a con self-contained build environment where you can you can uh, with just running one command you can build uh, a bundle that you can deploy to npm and that was assen essentially kind of the, the minimum viable product uh, the, the way i see it now what we could now do is uh, we could take aaron's webpack configs and everything from his um, dynamic uh, viz plugin repo and then just pull those into, the, into this repo and then make that as an option as well. So then you could decide, do you want to build an NPM package or do you want to build one of these dynamic plugins? Uh, and this is something that we're discussing right now. And I don't know what, what the timeline is, but this is definitely something that, that I'm, I'm keen on working on and hoping to be able to, uh, to um, work on in, 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 in the coming months. Uh, and if, if anyone, if anyone's interested uh, in collaborating on this, I'd be really happy to, to help you guys out. As a follow-up to that, Andre asks, is there, if there is a feature flag dynamic plugins, does it work? Can I import my own plugin to running superset without rebuilding superset UI? Yeah, I, I didn't try it yet. So, and one of the reasons why I didn't try it yet is because, um, since Aaron's work, uh, Superset has actually migrated from Webpack 4 to Webpack 5. And I noticed that Aaron's code was still using Webpack 4. So I, I'd, I'd rather migrate it over to Webpack 5. And Webpack 5 actually offers some pretty neat functionality that's, that's going to make the bundles even, even leaner. Uh, so I think there's some refactoring that we, we need to do. But then once that's, that's working, then I, I do think we we should make this kind of a first class citizen. So then you'd have the option of doing either NPM builds or dynamic plugin builds. Cool. Uh, this is actually from the chat. Uh, Bharat asks, when will mono repo be released in a stable version? Yeah, so it, it's going to be released on the 1.5 release. And I was just talking about this with uh, Elizabeth, who did the, the release for uh, the, the 1.4 release. Uh, and I'm not sure when 1.5 is going to be cut or who's going to who's going to be the release manager for it. But I, I think it's going to happen fairly soon. But Monorepo is going to be, yeah, Monorepo is going to be available on 1.5. Maybe we just make 1.5 all about just the Monorepo, <laughs> like we just do a, a, a quicker release. Um, yeah. Just so we have yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. I mean, we, okay. could, we could just make a cut right now and then stabilize it and then push it out. Yeah, something to discuss. Philip asks, is there a Docker file available that covers most, if not all, of the steps? Villa just demonstrated that would be very neat for using it in VS Code in a development container, for example. Um, there isn't. Actually, one, one thing that we've been discussing with Srini is actually kind of improving the, the whole Docker, Docker file slash Docker Compose user experience. So this is probably something that we should take into account. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely right. Like, it would be great if, um, yeah, if, if it can be a little bit more abstracted. And yeah, I think that would make it easier. Uh, Stefan asks, do you have any ideas for, around streamlining feature parity for different viz types? For example, we get questions around why the TS line chart, I think that's time series, not TypeScript. It's supporting advanced functionality, like rolling statistics, but the table chart is not. So I think this is a, maybe speak to the, bigger thing of just the kind of different control panel settings and UI elements that are exposed to different charts. Yeah, actually the um, advanced analytics used to only be available for NVD3 time series charts. And it, so it, it wasn't even, uh, advanced analytics wasn't even available on the new chart data API. Uh, Chart data, the, the advanced analytics functionality has actually now been added to the chart data API. 
uh, but it just hasn't been backported or implemented in any of the other charts except the eCharts plugins. So to answer your question, it should be fairly trivial to add advanced analytics to the table chart. We just haven't come to think of it yet or gotten to it yet. Cool. Um, Etienne asks, the blog post link to this masterclass features and chart library. Is there an intention to ultimately move away from eCharts and use Antcharts instead, or is it just for the sake of the example? Uh, no, uh, I, I'd say a resounding no. I think I've, I've been actually for, for this, this whole blog post, I was looking, looking for, for different uh, visualization libraries and, and Ant was one that I'd heard very good things about and I decided to try it out, but it turned out to be <laughs> not such a spectacular experience. Uh, it was really buggy, uh, and it, it, the, the feature set just wasn't any, anywhere comparable to eCharts. And uh, eCharts is, uh, I was just, because I'm, I'm, I'm actually reviewing the, the 5.3.0 release right now, and it's, it's really spectacular. So, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be moving away from eCharts anytime soon, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a really powerful um, and really extensible uh, charting library. So, I mean, if, if you guys know of any, any good uh, or really kind of up and coming, interesting this libraries, I'd, I'd love to hear about them on, on the Slack, but I don't think uh, the Antv uh, libraries is one of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a two related questions that I'll kind of combine. Um, so one is around, uh, Janet asks if there's a single place, like a community of, of people building plugins where people can help each other out. And related to that, Philip has asked, I remember there were plans to have a chart slash plugin hub slash marketplace. How are the plans progressing? I suppose this would give Superset a big boost. So maybe, um, I mean, I think like, do you think it'd be cool to have a, a space villa just to discuss custom viz plugins and just like, w maybe like, what are some ideas for how we can create a community here and um, just like have, have people, you know, more openly share the, the work that they're doing? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd really love to see a community building up around this. and. Uh, there's probably multiple different ways of, around getting to this, but I think one would be when people deploy to NPM, uh, they'd add a keyword for their plugin so that there would be something like superset, Apache superset as a keyword, and then people would have, a, have an easier time finding them. Uh, then another option would be just adding, adding links to our official documentation. So if you feel like you have a really cool plugin that you want to share with the rest of the world, uh, just open up a PR on, on the superset documentation and, um, and add it there. And I think Srini and I are probably going to add a section for, you know, custom biz plugins in the wild where, where people can link their own. And I think that'd be kind of a nice first step, but then ultimately, and eventually it'd be really nice if we had some kind of a hub where you can check in your plugins and track how, you know, you can rate them and track how many downloads you're getting and stuff like that. For sure. Um, Siam asks, can we generate J J JavaScript version of boilerplate code instead of TypeScript? Uh, no, but you can just pull out the, the type annotations, I think. But I, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I, I do think for a system like this, you really benefit from, from having the, the static typing. Types. So I'd, I'd, I'd recommend that. For sure. Um, can we map two control plane options to change one when one of them is changed? Example, changing time grain should also change the time shift and vice versa based on mapping. Related to that, uh, Abduram asks, for the liquid plugin, is it possible to make the color a parameter like red versus blue or whatever in the customize tab? Oh yeah, it's that's really simple. I mean, I think, well, okay, so I'll, I'll just add, answer the liquid thing first. So I. I was actually thinking about just adding that option uh, to, to my repo. So it's, it's trivial. Um, what I'm actually thinking about now is making it slightly more interesting. So adding support for gradients, but yeah, that'd be really, really simple to add just a kind of a, some kind of a control for that. Um, then the, the thing about the control panel thing where you make one, one control uh, dependent on the value of another one, there's, uh, you can add a map state to props callback to your control panel config, where you can then you can then change how that control panel is rendered based on 
state in other controls. And, and that's actually used in, in multiple different control panels. But uh, if you, for instance, look at the table chart, that's doing some fairly advanced stuff on map state to props. Uh, a few people have asked this, um, but people want to take superset chart and maybe uh, use it in a view project or take uh, one of the Viz plugins and embed it in an Angular app. Uh, I'm curious, like, if you want to speak generally about just taking some of these Viz plugin components and, and uh, embedding them outside of superset. I think you could probably fairly easily do that with a re um, with an iframe, um, but right now this is very kind of tightly de uh, tightly coupled to react so i think you're gonna have a you might run into trouble if, if you start integrating react and um and view or angular uh but so i think we need to probably abstract something out of superset ui first and then make that somehow available but uh, I'm, I'm sure you can come up with a wrapper somehow Last current question right now, and if people have more, please please add them. Um, what is the best way to customize existing Viz plugins? Uh, so I'm I'm assuming you're you're probably referring to the pre-built or the, um, default, the default Viz yeah. plugins. I think in I think the really the only way is is probably to fork superset and then then customize the plugins under the under the superset front end slash uh, plugin subdirectory. So that's really the, the only idea I, I can come up with. I, I'd probably not recommend it. So if there's anything that's missing, I'd, I'd much prefer you guys opening up a PR and kind of improving the, uh, the existing functionality of the plugins and then making, making it that way available to everyone else as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, anonymous attendee asked, there's a hook named set control value to change the control panel option and re-render UI, but is there any hook to change control panel option and call backend API with new options and then refresh the UI? I don't think there's anything really pre-built for this specific case, but I'm sure you could, because um, it's, it's just JavaScript essentially. So I'm sure you could probably add some functionality there. Um, you're probably going to have to deal with asynchronous requests and then somehow deal with those. That might get tricky, but I think it should be possible. I'm just not sure uh, you'd be calling. I'm assuming you're probably going to be calling some other backend API. But yeah, I, I think it should be should be possible. Does anyone have, if people have other questions, feel feel free to add them. In the Q and A tab. I do recommend everyone check out the docs and the blog post. Uh, they're very comprehensive, uh, and I think you also mentioned you would write more about the the data mask, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually in the middle of uh, documenting both the the chart data endpoint and the the data mask hook. So those should be available shortly but in, in the meantime i think uh, just looking at the existing plugins i think you can get very very far uh it seems like janet raised her hand yeah how does this work can I... I, she, I she asked a few questions so i kind of um sometimes people just do, do it by accident and then you can't lower your own hand i think so that's uh yeah so janet if you have more questions feel free to ask them <laughs> But I think, yeah, like the whole goal is like, yeah, by accident. Yeah, I, I, I do this all the time. The, 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 in Zoom, you can like raise your hand and then you can, one of us could give that person video and voice access and they could present and whatever. Um, we're, we're not really set up to do with this large of a group, but yeah, it, it is an option. Um, cool, we'll give it a few more seconds on questions. Um, if you have more, you know, the we don't have a, a channel just for Viz plugins right now. Uh, that's a good idea. We should we should think about it. Um, if anyone is interested in, uh, you know, in in helping to moderate that channel or or w want to help answer questions, like please reach out to me and and uh, maybe there'll be enough interest. Um, but for right now, you can use the customizing superset channel 
sorry, yeah, customizing superset um, channel to post questions about his plugins. Janet says, can you keep us posted on any more meetups? Yeah, we usually try to post them um, in the Slack. Um, another place, we, we post all of our events uh, right here. I'll just paste a link. So if you want to um, check that, then that's you can definitely do that. Um, we also, if you've signed up for this event, I believe we do email every attendee of every past event as well about new events. So, uh, and we have a newsletter on Monday, so that'll also have new events. So many opportunities, but if you need a source of truth, uh, the, our preset events pages is a good place to do it. Um, I don't see any more questions, so I think we can call it a wrap. Um, yeah, thanks Villa for, for doing this. Uh, we will have a recording, which we'll share to everyone here using the email um, that you signed up for this event. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for running this event. All right. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Take it easy.